Hi, I'm Toby and welcome to the joy of mathematics. Today we're going to work up towards something very beautiful. So if you'd like to work along at home, now's your chance to grab your own notepad and pen and you can follow along. Don't be afraid by what is already on the board. This is just a bit of primer that we're going to need to get started. I know that mathematics can sometimes evoke emotions of fear in people, but I really wish it wasn't that way. Mathematics can be very fun, and I think that's a side of it that we're going to see today. Don't be afraid by this math. I'm going to be here, and we're going to work through it together. I think we're going to have a great time, so let's get into it. What we do have here are some Taylor expansions for three common functions. We have our e to the x, our exponential function, our cos of x and our sine of x and the terms which allow us to write out expansions for these functions. To show you what e to the x looks like if you don't remember him, uh, just something that grows at almost an alarming rate really, uh, something that increases with an ever increasing rate and something that follows this sort of shape would be something like my love for mathematics. Let's move on to cosine. This is one of our trig functions. So if we were going to do a plot of cosine on a little axis, cosine is someone who starts off, maybe he's born into a rich family, he starts off very high in life, uh, but then things steadily get worse and, and there's a dip. You know, everyone has low moments, but, but then things get better. And in fact, cosine shows us that life is a constant cycle of ups and downs. You know. Like I like to say, these low points, this darkness is really needed to appreciate the light. We gave cosine a friend and that's sine. They're very similar people. Sine, unlike cosine, had to work for what he had. He sort of started with nothing, but he worked up to be pretty great. And then nothing lasts forever. He eventually lost that. And he too found that life is a constant cycle of ups and downs. Now you might notice a few similarities between our functions. They all have these similar terms, which are actually x to the n over n factorial. In the case of cos, um, his terms are the even terms, x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, and in sine, the odd terms, x cubed, x to the five, x to the seven. And in e to the x, all the signs are positive. We don't have this alternating positive negative like we did down here. And we have every power of x. So you can see that there might be some relation between these three people here. It's almost like they are one big family, but it doesn't seem to quite add up because if we, we were to add cos and sine, you know, maybe we'd get something similar to e to the x. We'd get all of the right terms, but we'd still have these minus signs in here. So we can't just do a simple addition to relate these functions to this one up here. We need a little bit of help. And you know, in those times when I struggle and I need a little bit of help, I do like to, you know, it's embarrassing to say this, but resort to asking my imaginary friends. Some people laugh when I tell them about my imaginary friends, but I'd like to introduce you to one of them today. And that's my friend I. I can be written as the square root of minus one. Now, it's a pretty funny little character to have I times I equal to a negative number, but that's exactly what's happening here. Um, hold on to your calculators, ladies and gentlemen, but it's going to even get a bit stranger. We'll get to that later. Now, we're going to use our little friend for some help. We're going to actually rewrite this e to the x function as e to the i x. That means that anywhere there is an x here, I can replace it with an i x. Let's go through and do that. Keep our brackets right so that we know that that whole term is squared. Likewise here. And there we go. We now have our function e to the i x. But what do some of these terms do? What can i really do for us? Let's have a look. So i to the power of 1 is just going to be i. But i squared 
is going to be minus 1, that's from our definition here. And if we were to do i cubed, that would be i or minus i. i to the 4 would be 1. And in fact, this series repeats itself between i minus 1 minus i and 1. And we can use that to rewrite some of these terms. So if we have an i squared in this term here, we can replace that with a minus 1. Let's take out that i, take out that bracket, and change this to a minus 1. Here we've got i cubed. We can replace that with a minus i. i to the 4, we can replace that with a 1. Let's see. Should leave that anyway. No mistakes here, just happy accidents. And our i5, well, we can work through the series to work that one out. And an i to the 5 would be equal to 1 times i, that would be i. Okay, now that looks pretty good. We still have though our imaginary friend speckled in here and one piece of advice I have for you is to always keep your real friends and your imaginary friends separate from each other. Uh, so let's write down this function but separating out our real and imaginary friends. We can erase this here, wipe these little devils off. And here we go, e to the i x. Let's do the real terms first. So he's real, he's real, he's real, and I think anything that has an even power will be real. So let's put it in brackets. 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4 4 factorial and there's going to be an infinite number of those real terms. Let's do our imaginary ones now. All of our imaginary terms are going to have this i out the front so in fact we can just take the i out the front of our brackets. What have we got? An x uh, minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus i x 5 over 5 factorial and an infinite number of those terms. So if we take a little look at what we're actually working with here, the eagle-eyed ones amongst you might recognize that this here is really nothing more than our old friend cosine of x. This is this function. And you also might realize that what's in brackets here is nothing more than our old friend sine of x. So this is i times sine of x. So e to the i x can also be written as cosine of x plus i sine x. That's uh, pretty amazing so far, but we're going to go a little bit further with it. Let me rub this off and we'll make some more space for ourselves. Okay, so I've written back up our equation that we've worked towards, and let's keep building. So, e is a pretty cool function. Like I said, it's an exponential, and it's also this nice number in mathematics. i is our imaginary friend, and x is some unknown. But what if we threw in one more curveball here? I'm sure you guys can handle it. I do believe in you. And our curveball is going to be pi. Many of you would have heard of pi, it's related to circles. In fact, if you knew the diameter of a circle and wanted to find the circumference or how far around the outside, you would do pi times the diameter. It's a curious little number and it's equal to 3.14159 and it keeps going forever. There is really no end to it. So it's a very nice number in mathematics and some people would consider it quite beautiful. I definitely consider it pretty beautiful, so I want to replace our x with pi. 
Now if we were to do that we would get e to the i pi is equal to cosine of pi plus i sine pi. Now what is cosine of pi? This is our cosine graph from before. Now what I didn't mention are a couple of things. First of all, you know, you know cosine repeats this cycle over and over again. If he starts up high at a value of 1, he sinks down to a value of negative 1. Then the time it takes for him to go all the way back to where he started is one period. And one period can be written as 2 pi. Now you might know a period as a full rotation. If I was to spin around, that's a full rotation or one period of spinning. And you could say I span 360 degrees. If we were to instead stop using the unit degrees and use something called radians, a full rotation would be expressed with 2 pi radians. Likewise with sine, he will complete a full cycle right here, and that's his 2 pi. So what is cosine at the value of 1 pi? That's half a rotation. Well, half a rotation, he will be right down here at his minimum, at his lowest point, unfortunately. That's going to be pi, and it's going to be a value of minus 1. Sine of pi, well, where is he going to be at half a rotation? He's going to be back at the middle, back at 0. So this value is going to be 0. e to the i pi is equal to minus 1 plus 0. We don't need to have unnecessary things in our artwork here. e to the i pi is equal to minus 1. Now I think that is a truly remarkable equation because not only does it have three distinct beautiful and curious little constants um, or variables from mathematics, we have pi, our a rational number that doesn't end, e, a similar number to that, um, that relates to all sorts of things and crops up in nature all the time, and our I, our little imaginary friend who we asked for help, all equaling to quite the nice number of minus one. One of the reasons I think it's beautiful is because it is so simple and because it brings together things that seem to be unrelated to each other into something with a very clear relationship. Some of the most beautiful equations and artworks you can make in mathematics are those simple ones with surprising results. I'm going to run some titles across the bottom of the screen and that's going to be areas where this sort of mathematics and this sort of equation can come in quite handy. These subject areas are all also courses on the website brilliant.org. Brilliant are the sponsor for today's episode, so I would like to thank them for sharing the joys of mathematics through their online courses. If you would like to dip your toes a little deeper into the pool of mathematics, then you can go to brilliant.org slash tibbies and sign up for free. The first 200 of you that follow that link will also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. This is also your personal invitation to subscribe to my channel if you would like more lessons like this. And from the bottom of my heart, I wish you an absolutely mathematical day.